Let's see. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so let's see. Okay, I wonder should we go? Should let, do you want to do? Should we just should we play your video here and then we can all see it? Um, or do you want to do? Uh, do you, should you we talk about it? Much better, I guess. Okay. Should <laughs> I, we talk? I have covered everything in that. Okay, great. Should we talk? Is there anything that we should talk about first today? Um, uh, you know? I have one PR for like that. You said that you need that uh, import linting stuff. I have implemented it with test and all. So that PR number is uh, let me check. One two one four. Okay. All right. So one two one four. Okay. Oh, okay. Great. The unused import stuff. Okay. Great. And you added the CI job. All right. Sweet. Okay. Is this? And then I took. Wait. Was the other PR? Did we merge that? Wait a minute. Did we merge that other PR that had the commit linting or like? Yes. 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 Right, I we guess we merged it. it. All right. We merged we it, and then now we have this new job. Okay. Great. Um, then import. Okay, great. Perfect. Perfect. Great. Okay, sweet, sweet. And I think I, I just, I'm adding a helper around this as well. Uh, that will go in YouTube. Mm, there is, there is an issue for that, like adding the standard uh, method to let, like do this uh, process exit part. There were some questions around it. I, okay. I will take a look at it and like we'll make a PR for that. Let's see. Well, because I think because I, it is something we do everywhere. So yeah, I think we had. Let's see. Where did I put that? I think I ha I had a branch where I was doing that um, yesterday. Actually, um, I'm wondering. Okay, run command. It looks like it didn't work. Let's see. Author identity unknown. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Yeah, I had a helper function that I added in this branch. Um, okay, so I didn't, I forgot that there was an issue for that. So, so this is what I did there. Um, where is this? Where's the commit? There we go. All right. Issue number is 1078. 1078. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I took the stuff out of, I took this and I moved it into this run command. Um, which basically goes and uh, it um, it just executes with logging. So um, let's see, log a deputy bug. Yeah, I think it just oops, it executes with logging. So it basically does the, the output to the logging. So what do we have here? I think it's similar. So where was this? So, yeah, so this was there simple. already in this file mm -hmm. uh, in our uh, yeah this that, was that, that here. commit right. linting program uh, commit yep. linting command. So I just moved it up. Great. Because great. it was it would be used twice. So great. So great. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. I think uh, yeah the main difference between this implementation and this implementation, I believe, is the proc dot communicate. Um, so we'll see we'll see how that okay and this one this one wants the output all right so that's a different it's essentially a different use case there um so we'll look we'll have to look and see 
if there's yes, other we need to ones. agree on a like agree on a standard interface that yeah. I want this, I want that, so that a single exactly. function can do that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we'll have to look and see where else create subprocess shell is used and uh, and and standardize exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. So, all right. Okay, and then this, so we can merge this. It looks like. Um, so I tested it by deliberately failing the test once and then yeah. like correcting and making the I, I do that in the CI. Perfect. See. Perfect. All right. And we still need to fix that software portal thing. Okay, so let's see. Things are kind of mixed there. Okay. One one question I have about code coverage. Mm -hmm. That is like why why does it show some files which have not been changed in certain PRs? That's a really good question. So um, okay, so 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 the code coverage stuff is not perfect. Um, let's see. Let's pick an example. Um, because like things, certain things don't make any sense. Um, certain things do make sense, and certain thing, things don't make sense. Really. You need to log in to just see it. Okay. So like we had no 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 changes in memory, but it's still like showing. And and in a lot of PR, it shows memory as a common thing with this app. Yeah, so yeah. Some problem with memory, but why? Yep, yep. Um, where's the if that works, is this just what is the diff in coverage though? Is it this the diff? Um, or is this what is just not covered? Let's see. I want to see the diff number of new lines missed. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what's going on with this right now, but 0.25, yeah, there's one line in here. That means it's hard to see which line that would be. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what would be causing that, but we need to, obviously, we'll have to track that down eventually. Um, so, test stuff, yeah. Yeah, I, this is, the coverage changing like this is, is, a, is, a, is a common thing. Um, mm, like that is because I, I I did the test for that, so it would like yeah. be eleven percent something. Yeah. Yeah, it should obviously it should be the same, but I have noticed that that yeah, just like you noticed, there's there's some stuff that seems to fluctuate that doesn't really make any sense. Um. So yeah, we do we definitely need to figure that out at some point. Okay, so the one thing here is I'm gonna squash this this time just because um the commit message formatting, you've used lowercase someplace and uppercase other places. So I believe what we have previously is all uppercase for the like the message without the qualifiers on where it is. So if you do uppercase next time uniformly, then I'll just rebase it. But for now, I'm just going to squash it. I would also add this to learn commit and enhancement. Cool, cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, just just so that we keep it all consistent. Um, this 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 as much as this is a machine learning project, uh, this is also a uh, project where we can figure out, um, you know, what are all the what are what are all the CI jobs that can be used for other projects to write code, you know, write cleaner code in general. Um, so. You know, a little bit of a, we're doing a little bit of a, a meta experiment with the whole thing as well. Um, so let's see, fixes. Great. So the more CI jobs that we can uh, we can introduce to make our writing code and Ruby process easier, the better. Um, so what is that key thing called where everyone, every first letter is capitalized? Is there some special word for that key thing? Um, I mean, 
you mean like the first word of the commit message? Yes, yes. What should be called like like there is camel case and there is something. I mean that's just I mean that's just like you know a standard standard grammar, right? We would we would capitalize the first word of our sentence, right? Because really, what what we're looking at here is like these are um, you know these these define the scope of the message, and then this is the message itself, right? Um, so this is sort of this is like the sentence, and then this is you know what's the scope, right? So this is yeah, this is this the message as a, as a regular English sentence, and and these are qualifiers on the scope. Um, is that the answer you were looking for? Or? No, no, I was just trying to put a single word in, and the okay. uh, commit letting. Oh is yeah, what you said. <laughs> I see. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Okay. So we we merged that. Great. Perfect. Thanks for doing that. Um, so commit. Uh, so commit, uh, or let's see, um, auto remove imports as CI job. Sweet, great. That that is very nice to have. Okay, so demo. Okay, and we don't know if we'll get Sudhanshu yet today or not. Okay. Oh, we did get Sutanchu, but we lost Hashim now. All right, okay. <laughs> I was trying to wait so we'd get everybody, and now we lost Hashim. All right, okay, yeah, I know he was having internet issues, so. Um, okay, well, we will go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll roll. So, uh, Sutanchu, let's see. Did you get a chance to, let's see, where did we do that? Did we merge that? Okay, no. Let's see. Um, okay, so there's some feel, failing CI jobs. Did you get a chance to take a look at that? Uh, yes, so some of them is actually related. One of them is actually related to the commit message. So the way I have written commit message is like plain commit message. Okay, well, let's so, that, yeah. Yeah, don't worry so about that is one of the problems. Yeah, don't and, worry about uh, another problem. One. Okay. And another problem was with the bandit. Okay. I think there are some issues with that. Okay, so this is all bandit related then. Okay, all right. Okay, I wasn't sure whether we had introduced a vulnerability into bandit or whether we just were grabbing a new. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure what what whether it was a new vulnerability that that it was detecting, or um, or uh, or it just got updated somehow. Let's see what what is it saying here? Or like, cause I'm having trouble figuring out. Let's see. Well, I should look at it with a full screen. Yeah, I was having trouble figuring out why it was raising an error. Let's see. Oh, it should be right here. Bandit, test bandit. Error, exception. Raise exception. All right, let's go take a look. Ah. One one more thing I was uh, I wanted to bring up. This is not like development related, but this is definitely mm -hmm. DFML related. Uh, that is that is we don't have an uh, a 
an image like a, a look or something that could uh, ah. identity as a yes tfml as a product as an as a tool like pytorch has its own uh, image and like tensorflow has its own image and people mm -hmm. just connect to it they they just see it and they go to it and it yeah like yeah kind of thing i don't know how to put it like it is like sort of yeah sort of uh, it's important nice thing to have yeah yeah i agree so so, so uh, if we can like open an issue and just ask for the community to create some logos in this. Like, yes, and I think do we have do we may not have an issue. Um, let's see, logo. So I'll just ping up some of my graphic designer friends and ask. Yeah, them. great. That would be great. Um, yeah, I got I got commitment from the legal team to review, um, uh, logo. Um, let's see, community. So is there any legal legal stuff that, that needs to be reviewed with that? Uh, yeah, well, Intel's legal team is, you know, like they, they, they have all sorts of requirements. I'm not sure what they are. It's not transparent. <laughs> um, but they did say, they were nice enough to say, we will review a logo. Uh, and they suggested, you know, looking at, um, you know, they said animals do, do well. Um, you know, there's lots of open source projects that have animal related logos. Um, but really, and, and Yash also shared with me, um, that he had, had look, started to look at, um, uh, creating a logo. Um, he wasn't, he, he had one attempt, but he wasn't satisfied with it. So, uh, if, you know, we, we need, we need to build, you know, a library of, of options, right. And then we can all, cho we can choose one. Right. Um, so that would be great. Uh, okay. So I'm going to submit this and pin this, um, and then feel free to comment more details. Um, so let's see, we can't pin more than three. So that's a good one to pin. Uh, okay. So, okay. Well, all right. So in this on the theme, when I think we need something that has a left side bar because uh, we are very much organized that way. Yeah, we really are, aren't we? Yeah, this one is not. This one did not work out. <laughs> um, let's see the executable book project. I've been using this for an internal thing, and 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 I very much liked that. That's that's pretty slick looking. Um, but we only have the two options, so we should see if there's any more out there before we, um, you know before we make a choice um let's see so yeah if anybody has any other suggestions there let's put them there so um let me comment on this oh you commented on this uh let's see yeah i wonder what the hell is going on with this thing um we need to figure this out actually this price should be level with kind ci failing there we go yeah um yeah, this needs to be fixed. Uh, I had to push that. Also, there are some some uh, error messages that are warning messages that are thrown in uh, while running those test docs, testing the docs. Yeah. So if you like, just take a look at once. I I don't know if if it's an issue or not. But Let's see. It could be like where where it shows we... warning doc tree contains reference to non-existing document. Oh, it says that when building the docs. Uh, yes, for when I run the test docs, I'll just paste the output and go up one second. Okay, yeah, let's keep an eye on that because I thought I just made the, I thought I'd turned on the thing that says basically treat all warnings as errors for the documentation builds. Um, but if not, then we definitely, I mean, e either way, like we need, we need to catch all those things. Um, we don't want to end up with a bunch of warnings. Uh, all right. Okay. So great. Let's let's record that. So uh, docs build showing warnings logo. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. Logo. Like I said. So yeah, I should looked at something, but uh, we could we could if if you have anything else or any other ideas or anybody wants to contribute one. Uh, that would be great um, because yeah, and the legal team is is ready to review. So we should make sure that with the logo, um, let's 
shoot for SVG format, uh, ideally with design files. Uh, all right, yeah, so that way we can change it as needed. Um, and SVG is a good format um, since so it's scalable. All right. um, so let's see. Edit, oops, I wanted to track the issue. All right, great. So let's see, do we have everybody? All right, we do have everybody. Perfect. Okay. Anything else for general business today? Um, so we needed to track down the should I failure and that. Okay, so let's do, let's see. So the should I failure. Okay, so this guy, this guy is failing and it's failing and it's not giving us the output. Um, so we can't see why it's failing. So I think, and then you added the, okay. Uh, for pre-process. Rename PR. Oh, yeah, and I needed that for something. What did I need that for? Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm about to use your new source uh, for something else. Um, okay, so should I just finally on it? Run for DF process rename PR. Um, can't see log output. So we'll uh, merge run command. Um, use run command. Uh, from bandit to C log output uh, rebase master and then we'll use because this one the point of adding this run command thing is that it used the log output and then uh, evaluate um, so analysis of asyncio dot create subprocess exec to see how we can combine helper functions in uh, service um, diff.util.proc and diff. Uh, and let's see. Uh, Okay, I think these are the ones I know about. There might be more. I know we have at least three helper functions now. Um, okay. All right. Um, all right, let's roll the demo then. Anything else? Um, or we'll roll the demo. No, nothing from my side. Nothing from my side. Okay, great. So. Uh, can you hear me fine? Yes. You have anything for us to talk about before we okay, do Okay, so uh, I wanted to ask about the demo. Uh, uh, yes, I wanted to ask if uh, we are going to have some kind of intro and uh, uh, Will we be creating a playlist? Like, uh, how will we go about uh, the different notebooks? Hmm. Okay. Well, you know, I think I think that let's watch uh, Sahil's demo, and uh, then we can sort of, you know, use that as 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 a guide, and and you know, see what what works well with that, and and what you know we might want to, you know, what what we might want to change format wise. 
um, in case, you know, I haven't seen it yet, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll have some sort of comments. So let's uh, let's let's roll the demo and then we can do an analysis on, on you know, what what makes for good demo. So here we go. Oh, you guys can see, right? Yeah. OK, great. Let's roll your demo. This in two ways. Hello and welcome to another video from DFFML. Today we oh, audio is not audible until you text specifically share that tab. Ah, okay, let's see. Yeah, let's share the tab. Okay. Thank you. We can do this in two ways. We can By save a model screen, in a directory or we can save a model as an archive. I would walk you through both of these methods and uh, sh show you the differences between the two. So let's get, st let's get started. First we'll go ahead and import all the necessary modules. Then we will build our dataset for training. In DFML, we have this very nice cache download function, which is item potent in nature. Then we'll go ahead and load our dataset into memory. Now let's split our data into train and test sets. So now we are going to instantiate a model and define all our features. Here I have set the location as a folder. If there is no extension in the location, it could be inferred as a folder. Let's go ahead and train our model. So let's go ahead and take a look at our model folder which has all the necessary files to restore our model property. So we have this job with file which actually contains our model. To test the reproducibility, we can go ahead and check the accuracy before and after loading the model from the saved state on disk. So currently we can see we have an accuracy of 0.4968 from the model in our memory and then we will restart the kernel to make sure that our results are reproducible. And as we can see we have the exact same accuracy from our loaded model as well. Now let's go ahead and change the model location to an archive. Let's change it to scikit-rc. And we need to make the same change down below where we would be verifying that our model is properly loaded. Alright, so let's go ahead and restart the kernel. Alright, so let's read in all of the cells and see how the model is saved as an archive. As you can see, a cycle tarsis zip has been created. And we get the accuracy of 0.4906. And let's go ahead and see if that is the case with the loaded model as well. Yes, we get the same accuracy here as well from the zip file. So there is a slight difference between the two methods. Let's go ahead and take a look. So 
So if we go ahead and take a look at the scikit uh, scikit fold folder one, we only have the scikit JSON and the joblib file, which is the save model on our disk. If we go ahead and take a look at our zip file, we also have a config.json. So this is the same config that you pass while instantiating the model. So for better reproducibility, I would recommend you go ahead and use the archives because they also store the config. Now let's go ahead and try another archive format. Now I'm I'd be using .tar.gz. We need to make the same change down here so that we load the correct model. And let's go ahead and train our model. Instantiate and training as and we have started training and we can see that the tartar gz has appeared here The accuracy from our in-memory model is 0.4562. Let's restart the kernel and reload the model from our Tartar GZ archive as well. And as we can see, we have achieved the same accuracy after loading the model as well. Now let's go ahead and talk about config.js. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the differences between the two methods of saving and loading. On the left I have the folder. Uh, in on the left I have the folder and, and on the right side I have both the archives open. So as you can see the scikit features.joblib file is common among all the three so this is the same the only difference you would see is that we have a config.json in both of the archive files and it's not saved here so when we export a model in an archive we save the config which was used to instantiate the model this contains the hyperparameters and other features and all the information that was used to instantiate the model so this is a recommended method for better reproducibility. If we take a look at the config.json, we can see all the information that we passed to the model while instantiating it. Same file is there in the side, zip file as well. I hope this helps and gives you a better understanding on how to save and load models in DFFML. If you have any questions or issues, please feel free to open an issue on our GitHub repository, inter slash DFFML. Very nice. Very nice. Great job. Great job. That was great. Sweet. I, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Great job. Um, so, so you can like download the full, full size file from the drive link. It is on the DM. Okay. Just upload it from the because this is not published content. Like yeah, this. yeah. Pass the link. Yeah, perfect. Okay, great. Um, so let's see. So, okay, yeah, that's great. Uh, nice, very nice work. Very nice demo. So, so Hashim's code was like already very much polished. I didn't have to change anything, so I just put that time in like making the video. Sweet, yeah, good, good, good stuff. Um, okay, yeah, that went great. So let's see, let's think about um, so for general demo format, uh, what went really well here? So let's see, what went well? Um, so your window, your window manager layout very much facilitated understanding what the hell is going on here with your um you know your folder structure and the way that you showed the files um so let's see uh, showing 
files uh, and directories created uh, as a result. Um, uh, explaining uh, contents. Um, so that that was very that was you did a good job of that. Um, so let's see what else do we got here. Um, let me resume sharing everything. So what else? So let's see. I'm not sure. Let's see. I'm not sure. Does anybody else have any comments on things that we could make clearer um, or or format? Like, I think I think. Let's see. What your your intro? What was your intro? Your intro was nice. That was good. Let's see. Hello and welcome to another video you. from DFFML. Today we will be talking about saving and loading models. We can do this in two ways. All right. Okay. Yeah. I like that intro. So, you know, welcome to the video. Uh, this is what we're going to be talking about. Intro. That's good. Um, you know. Little video. Uh, we'll be talking about. Okay. Um, Let's see, and then what did we have? Did you have a little wrap up at the end? Here? I hope this helps and, yeah, and you had a nice little gives you a better understanding on how to save and load models in DFFML. If you have any questions or issues, please feel free to open an issue on our GitHub repository, enter slash DFFML. Open issue uh, if you have questions. All right. Uh, all right, great. Okay, so anything else here? So anything else for things that went well? Anything particularly stand out? Uh, well, uh since since I'll be doing five or six demos, I was thinking of uh, a separate video to cover the startup phase of the. Uh, I think books. I think that's a that's a good thing to to think about. Yeah, I was thinking that as well. Um, separate video uh, to cover startup phase of notebooks or like boilerplate. And I was thinking that. Uh, in this way, the tutorials could come uh, below it, uh, including Sahil's as well. Uh, let's see, say that again. I didn't catch what you said. Uh, I said that uh, in this way, we could first uh, explain the setup process mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, using a cache download and importing stuff and all that. Okay. Uh, and after that, uh, we could just uh, go through the use cases of different notebooks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we could have a playlist like that. Yeah, that's that's a good plan. Okay, I was also thinking... Um, I was also thinking we should really figure out how to move that nested uh, stuff to um, out of out of the uh, into the main repo somehow. Um, where was that? Uh, I think there's a branch. Where's this branch? Uh, 
I swear I had a branch for something like that. Um, I don't know. Oh, well. Um, yeah. Oh, no, I was messing with it in a notebook. Um, okay, yeah. Because uh, there's, there's got to be... Um, yeah, there's there's got to be a way that we can get rid of that nest async IO apply stuff at the beginning of every notebook, um, because that's you know ideally we wouldn't have to do that. Um, so yeah, we'll cover cache download. So hmm, okay. So yeah, separate video for boilerplate. Um, okay, cool. Um, and then we can have a playlist. Uh, playlist two. Uh, for notebooks, um, play video goes first. Okay, and then we'll just leave this one as is. Um, the only other, the other thing that this made me notice um, is so config dot json um, is that you know yeah this uh, right now. We're only saving to um, uh, to archives. Um, so let's see. What does our ADR say? Do we have we even merged that ADR? I don't know. Um, no, it looks like we have not. So. What does it say here? Okay. So we talked about mutable and immutable config. Um, we talked about tunable versus non tunable. Um, Okay. We talked about. Okay, yeah, because now I'm thinking. Okay, so we're logging. We're logging when we load if the things are different. Um, and we sort of started this whole. Sorry. We started this whole discussion about objects saving and loading off of that. Um. So we need to sort of flush out because I'm just thinking, you know, the config.json only being in the archive. Um, ideally, we should be able to put it on the directory as well. The question is, you know, what are we going to do with it right now? <laughs> and we don't really have much to do with it, right? Um, so I think we probably need to we probably need to take a take a good look at the stuff that you've done, Sahil, and and figure out how do we abstract it into this generic object saving and loading, um, and then and then think about you know how do like how do we instantiate, figure out what object it is, and then instantiate it. Um, uh, for example, like you know, given the base class and the plugin name, or yeah, given the base class. Your base class and the plugin name, um, you know, instantiate using a given config. Um, and we may want to think about uh, including the plugin type. Let's see, where's the screenshot of that? Yeah, so we may want to think about change because this is the config structure. So we may want to think about exporting as well the plugin type here. Um, so, and this is not really demo video related, right? But we uh, we know this. So, and now we're only saving uh, the config.json to archive. Uh, need to look at um, uh, model saving and loading code to figure out how we could abstract it. Uh, generic version, uh, which would be related to this whole, um, this ADR here. Um, and then, right now we're only using config. Uh, 
Okay, saving config to JSON archives. Okay, uh, we should also save plugin. Uh, name to JSON. So, plugin. Uh, so, for example, you know, plugins config. All right. Um, so to save the config, uh, we've been calling this. This is there's helper functions called config dict um, because it's config dictionary essentially is what this gets loaded in as, and it has the plugin and then the config. Um, we'd gone back and forth on including the plugin type. Um, talking about this with Sakshama, I think Sakshama and I had talked about this, and we'd gone back and forth on including the plugin type mainly because uh, we don't want to open ourselves to the, actually maybe I said this in this meeting, that that, that YAML, um, the lib YAML CVE, um, where they support arbitrary Python objects. Um, now, while we don't support arbitrary Python objects with this, um, as, as soon as we start getting into um, plugin type. There's a risk of somebody instantiating the wrong plugin type for something. So uh, controlling the plugin type um, is you know, something that we might open up at some point, but for now will probably be um, provided to this generic um, uh, version here. So uh, we'll provide these functions with the plugin type. Uh, so and model base source etc um, okay uh, okay so anything else so we'll we talked about okay so we talked about the um, the nest apply we need to move out to its own repo uh, or move into the main repo so that that isn't duplicated in every notebook um, and people you know when they import DFML in a notebook get the right functionality. Um, I think that poses issues. Hey, hey did, did I miss on something because my internet died just? Uh, just that we're gonna just just the config JSON for we need to figure out the config JSON uh, probably save the plugin name as well to there and then look at this stuff and start to abstract it into a generic version right which is related to this object saving and loading ADR and then probably continue from there um, before we do more model specific work uh, I think getting getting this object saving and loading down using data flows um, oh, yes. will then allow mm -hmm. us to you know effectively um, decide what we want to do with the, the config properties and stuff in terms of if they're not equal um, mainly because we really need a way to uh, so let's see uh, this is an important next step so this is an important next step uh, because we want we would like to be able to load an object uh, from disk without uh, giving any config, right? Uh, currently, we must instantiate the model with a config, then load. Um, so this is why this is sort of what I see as the next step here is because, um, yeah, then we can, we'd have this arbitrary mechanism for loading something with a config and then we can say, okay, so models, how does that relate to models? Uh, it probably is the same as everything else with the mutable, immutable configs if you already specify. Um, but yeah, let's get to a point where we can load something generic. Um, 
Okay, so anything else that we should think about with regards to, uh, you know, the demo or notebooks in general? I had one question. Do yep. we have to create the demo like beforehand? Uh, no, uh, that was just because Sahil had uh, inter internet issues. Uh, so I wanted to make sure the demo was was going to play smoothly, right? Um, OK, so uh, can we also go for that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you want to record it, go for it. Um, then that that makes it easier because um, then we can just, you know, I'll just repost this video on the main main uh, main channel. Um, yes, I was also thinking that maybe we can, uh, I can record the demo. Okay, and great. And give you the link of it. Okay, great. Something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the only reason I was suggesting we can present the demos in here is just because uh, I figured it would be two birds, one stone. Um, but if you guys want to do record it on your own, that that's cool with me. Um, so let's see. All right, well, let's see. We got this, uh, the rename PR. We were figuring out the should I issues. We came up with a plan for that. So this I'll, I'll take care of this run command stuff and I'll do the rebase and stuff and, and see what the output is. And then if the output is caused by something that, that, you know, that was an addition from your pull request, then uh, I'm going to punt that back to you and ask to see if you can dig more on that. Um, and then we'll do this analysis of subprocess exec uh, when we finish up with that. Yep. So I will look into it. Great. So, um, so yeah, so I'm just going to make that a note here. So is there anything else we need to talk about today? Um, let's see. Do we want to get, uh, does anybody have any, any open issues that they'd like to highlight or any uh, pull requests? I, I want to ask, like, is the, what is the vision from here? Like, would we be chasing the uh, beta release of would we be going to like plug in stuff like the plug in architecture, splitting it from the main repository? Uh, like, what's our next step, sort of uh, large, large scale architecturally here? Yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Like, we, so, we, we need to hit the beta release sooner or later. So that's nice. yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's a good, that's a good, that's a good question. So, um, let's see. So, what, how do we get to beta here? So. Let's see. Um, beta. Uh, all right, so let's put this. So, um, so okay, so we'll create an issue when we're done with this PR. So we'll create an issue for this whole consolidation when we're done with this PR. That way we don't start doing it prematurely because um, we need to get that other helper in here. So uh, we need to see if we see issues uh, caused by. So if we see issues caused by changes in this PR, uh, we'll have. So I'll do this part, and then if we see changes or things, issues being caused by this PR, then you'll fix it. And otherwise, um, when once we're done with this, we'll create an issue for this. And so he'll, maybe you'll pick that up, maybe you won't, whatever you feel like uh, when we get done with that. So, okay, so let's see, how are we getting to beta? 
Um, so this is where, okay, we haven't, okay, I haven't been doing a good job with the issue labels. Um, or wait, the milestones. Okay, so essentially I haven't, yeah, I haven't gone through and, and done. So this is what we had for, for, ba I'd been, I'd been tagging things. Uh, okay, so the way, the way that this, this usually works is tag everything for the next, like a, a, a long shot. Um, and okay, so let's see. So as far as beta is concerned, beta would be where we're hoping to declare like an API stability, right? Um, so we really need to have like the, the accuracy scores were a big thing that, that we needed to flush out because that was a big API breaking change. Um, so we really need to focus on this, this right now this milestone was was really a, a hodgepodge of of things that we uh that that we would like um and which i think included the the web ui and 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 you know sort of a lot of stretch goals um at this point uh we need to take some of this stuff and, and refocus it actually hey the ice cream sales demo is done um So, yeah, so we need to refocus because a lot of this stuff will need to be moved. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to take all of this and we're going to make a new milestone. Um, okay, so actually let's look at this guy. So usually what I do is we write stuff, we have it for... Um, you, you know, we know, ex we know, usually what happens is we know certain things that need, need to get done like ASAP, right? And I try to tag those with the, the next, whatever the next increment is, right? So we need to decide what things we need, we need to decide what things, um, what things really matter here. Um, and then we pick them off. We need to move. We need to move stuff from this current beta release milestone, probably into the 1.0 release. Um, and okay, let's just move it all right now. And then let's see. Milestone 1.0. Because I think we'll probably do a, a, a 4.1 for the work that you guys did um and and then we still need a few more things there's there's definitely a few more things before we need before we can declare beta uh, i think we need to refactor the http api is a big one um there needs to be i was going to write some more documentation around data flows and expand that um we i was talking to some people internally at intel and they have a similar use case um and uh similar similar 100 yeah, complete uh they have a similar use case for an execution environment however theirs is like a, a linear like a sequential flow of operations um so i'm going to expand that um that execution uh, expand the data flow stuff to support different execution environments rather than just the parallel uh or like the, the permutations based one that we have um we definitely need a bunch more c the the ci related work is always um is always high priority right because that's what helps us uh effectively take in new contributions um so let's see uh Oh yeah, and then anything that's going to get deprecated needs to needs to uh, needs to get done. Um, let's see. So Sphinx copy button. I don't think that is a huge priority here. So let's see. Oh, this probably definitely needs to be done. Um, so we can start taking these and putting them on beta. And instead of using beta as sort of, because beta was kind of like a, uh, beta was just more of a, a, a area to throw everything that we knew we needed. But now um, it's looking more like that'll be 1.0.
um, sort of as, as wish list, right? Um, so we know that we need to do this exposing more information from the models, um, which right now we have model type and uh, model trained, not trained. So essentially, let's think as, as far as thinking about planning, um, and I wish we could give you guys permissions to just do this, but if you can ping me, if you think something should go in beta, then ping me and I'll, I'll try, I'll add it, right? I'll put the milestone on it, right? Because we really just need to decide what things, because when the, the main point is if we declare a beta release, like you, it's, we need to be API stable, right? And we need to, we, we can start thinking about, we could make API changes between beta and, and 1.0, but that type of thing is going to, uh, you'll lose users, right? Um, when you make breaking changes, um, so we really want this to be as as as. Uh, we don't want to be tensorflow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. Um, and and working things in. So, for example, okay, and 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 how do how do we avoid that? Right, is really um, things that are getting so so. Make 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 sure that we have flushed out our usage of our high level APIs as much as possible, right? Um, so let me write this down. So flush out usage of high level APIs, right? Because these are what the high level ones are really what we're committing to, right? We're committed to stability here. Um, so make sure function names are correct, parameters are correct, uh, you know, flow flow works. Um, so this is like accuracy to score probably needs to happen. Um, um, I don't, I mean, I'm sure there's a few more here, right? Um, things, things like that that are very user facing, we need to figure out those, right? And we need to identify what those are. Um, we need to uh, let's see. Streamline data flows. Yeah, we need to streamline data flows. That's for sure. Um, so we need to, let's see, uh, document, so data flows. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done around data flows. So abstract or support different execution modes. Um, um, when the sequential is the one that's been brought up, uh, and then, uh, support for different, uh, operation implementation networks. All right. Um, and so the operation implementation networks. Okay, so this is the main thing that I'm I'm hold, held up on uh, on writing the tutorials right now. So I wanted to write some data flow tutorials to, to cover the various syntax and capabilities that we have right now. Um, the main thing that I wanted to do before that was um, uh, was to write another operation implementation network to showcase you know why we're doing it this way. Um, because right now, you know, flip, there's the flow based programming aspect and there's like a lot of benefits to that, right? You can do, um, you know, you can do analysis on this serialized format for what the execution flow looks like. Um, and that's very powerful. Um, and you can, you know, do a lot, you can, you can do merges of data flows and, 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 you know, expand, expand upon things in that way. Um, but the, one of the main reasons is is the ability to switch out the the implementations right underneath the operations right um, so getting that support in I was going to target uh, is going to target open API uh, based services uh, and so there's uh, work to be done around uh, definitions um, definitions uh, and uh, uh, work to be done 
around definitions and making and uh, tying them closer to config infrastructure. Um, so the the key with this is, and this is this is also so uh, unified unifying config. Um, so we need to, so, so the config stuff, right? A huge amount of this project has to do with configuration, right? Um, so the data flow definitions are not as tightly coupled or is not, are not as integrated with the definitions, uh, with the rest of the config infrastructure as they could be. Um, we need to get to the point where, um, where the inputs, the inputs to a data flow can be, can be a config, um, a config, a config object. So inputs, or sorry, inputs for an operation uh, should be able to be made into a config class uh, instance. Uh, okay. Um, Cause this will, so this will, this also enables us to run uh, operations one as uh, one offs from command line. Okay. The other thing that is happening here is that with this arbitrary, so that arbitrary saving and load loading thing, I think is is a big piece of this. Um, so uh, object. Saving and loading. Uh, so, okay. Um, so once we get the ob arbitrary object saving and loading, right, you can essentially define, um, so you could define a model, you could define a source, right, and, and you could say you, you, you um, like if you were defining a model um, and you wanted to load the model, right, you would, you would give uh, the data flow to load, and it would give you the instantiated model, right? And the data flow to load, you know, if it's a zip or a tar file, we would leverage, you know, we'd be using the existing stuff that you, you've implemented, right? So uh, if it's a, um, this also gives us the ability to say like, okay, the, you know, okay, tying, tying the saving and loading in with the operations and making the operations the the same like executing the the operations uh, having their inputs be be able to turn their inputs into the config classes allows us to reuse the command line infrastructure uh, around them and it also allows or the command line infrastructure with them um, so you, and this in conjunction with the saving and loading you can imagine a world where you could have, uh, for example, a run operation. So the, the run data flow operation, you could have a serialized uh, description of the run data flow operation um, along with, um, you know, along with the, uh, the, the data flow to run. And you would specify things like the orchestrator and all that stuff in there. Right, and so then you could have a, a, a self-contained description of, you know, a data flow to run along with the orchestration to run in it. Um, and then anytime you needed to do anytime, let's see, how do I explain this? Um, if you can do, if you can fit these pieces together, then you can really use that run data flow operation like in a, in a lot of different places, because if you, if you begin to structure things around, you know, let's see. So for example, if for the object saving and loading, um, if, if it takes, instead of taking a data flow, right? So if it takes a data flow, it's still, it will, you still need to specify the orchestration environment, right? So if it takes like, if it takes in, if it takes, if it takes this run data flow operation, then the run data flow operation, we instantiate the operation 
like it would take an operation instead of a data flow and that data flow or and that operation would be the run data flow operation to load an arbitrarily complex thing right or you could just have a single function because an operation is a function and it would load you know your model um but if you have the run data flow operation then you can specify the orchestration as well um and and what operation implementation networks to use and all of that um so really the point being we gotta we have to to tighten up the config infrastructure here um because that's going to allow us to uh to to leverage things in more places um so ideally we so regarding regarding this object saving and loading part do, do we have an issue to track this currently or we are just having it as we have like the discussion happening in the adr which is here so we need to sort of flush out you know and write some write some experimentation and then add to this document um, as necessary. So, right. regarding ADRs, I, I sometimes feel like that. Uh, why don't we leverage discussions to you to do this? Yeah, thing? definitely. Let's do it. Yeah, that's a good that's a good way to do it. Um, we have because used it, it ends up as a PR and and sometimes it's really difficult to find. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. So, um, let's start a discussion. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, let's see. So this is where this is tricky. So Yeah, what the 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 goal here would be to take, you know, a data flow or an operation. Um so a data flow is like a set of operations and an operation is also an operation so it can't be a data flow. Uh, consist of a single operation yeah a data sure. flow consist of a, can consist of a single operation uh, i'm pretty sure there's like a run command a yes, run off so. yeah why, why do we differentiate between the three into between the two our data flow or an operations um why do we differentiate between what uh, you you just said right that takes the object and a data flow or or location or an operation uh yeah because um we want to we probably want to add some stuff around your uh for example we we want to we want to use a default so for example if a location is given yeah okay so if a location is given then we run the code to create the data flow uh right so or then we we use the existing model save load uh, model archive um, uh, data flow uh, stuff. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is all I was saying here is that if we get a location, then we're going to call your code that you just wrote, right? And we're going to create a data flow from it um, because it's likely my guess is that um, well we'll support so that the point of this is to support saving and loading of, of arbitrary objects right um, now my guess is most of the time people will will just give a zip file location for whatever they're doing right so if i have a model i'm going to save and load my my zip file model right or if i have a um if i have a 
uh, specific operation um, like that I've configured in Python or something, right? So say 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 I take an operation and I, I instantiate it with its config, and now I want to dump it out, um, dump dump it dump out the configured version to a to a place where I could I could you know move it somewhere else, right? And then execute it. Uh, then uh, I might just specify the path, right? Um, so my guess is my guess is most of the time the your location code is the location to archive code the that code will end up getting called here but we would like the ability to to have it be arbitrary right um kind of like the you know the, the get at her for the the load and save right that you did <laughs> um so so the goal is to create if there's a location um otherwise if there's a data flow reply supplied execute the data flow using the default orchestration environment right um but if an operation is supplied um then if an operation is supplied then we have a single operation data flow right and that operation might be um uh so if location is given if operation is given uh, execute single operation data flow one one more question I have. Yeah. It might be it might be like illogical, but but one question: How how does this uh, improve upon? Like we are trying to generate uh, save and load objects in a generic manner, mm -hmm. and uh, and how does that differ from pickling in Python? So, okay, so, so yeah, so the main reason the main the main way that it differs from pickling is that pickling um, pickling. So the question is like, why do we do this instead of like just pickling? Somebody because you may pickle. not want to. Okay, so the 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 point of this is that maybe your maybe your data flow does pickle it, um, but maybe it doesn't. Right. the The point is, you take an object and you produce a serialized representation, or you do something to to save it. Right. And so, so I could the something that I do could be pickle the object. Right. Um, but we don't want to enforce one particular way of doing it, right? Uh, the point of this is to 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 make that open ended, right? To provide the infrastructure by which you could say, okay, I want to pickle it, or I want to put it in, you know, I want to store it to JSON, right? I'm just saying, hey, when I save it, I'm going to use this data flow to save it, right? And that data flow might do the pickling, or it might, you know, uh, you know, choose some other format, right? Does that does that answer your question yes. or okay? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, point here is to uh, uh, allow user control over how their object gets saved. Um, Uh, so, and then we could, so, uh, if you had a single operation data flow, um, so if you have a single operation data flow, um, and you executed, you know, run data flow, then you would use that to configure, uh, configure, uh, different implementation or different orchestrator or networks. Okay. Uh, Okay, um, let's see, we'll put this here. Uh, okay. All right, yeah, so we can flush out more stuff there. Um, so the saving and loading, I see that as a big thing, um, mainly just because, yeah, it'll, so that'll extract, abstract it, um, out to a higher level, the stuff that you did 
the, that was the foundations of it, right? And now we abstract it out and we support other things. Um, and we support it in a more complete manner by loading, instantiating the object with the config. Uh, we need to we need to do the unifying the config stuff. Um, so this also includes, you know, like converting uh, to correct data type, uh, and this so with new um, mutable uh, uh, code. Uh, we can we can now convert to correct data type uh, if uh, on access if it is incorrect. Uh, so this includes putting loading um, config dict to uh, instantiated object. Um, so we had we have many code paths um, through the config stuff right now um, and getting to a place and, and the result is sometimes you end up with okay here's an example of that where's that export um, then uh, service HTTP tests this does this have the export no, it doesn't. Okay, so there's somewhere somewhere in here. There's a a, a data flow with an export on it um, because for some reason this see in this in this we're supplying config to this uh, remap operation and it takes a data flow and we've passed an actual data flow object here now, but so we've passed a data flow object here. This is a config dictionary, but not like the actual config object. And so we have lots of places where we mix real data types with the dictionary representations. And so there's some places where that works and there's some places where it falls apart. Um, and so if we can consolidate all the config stuff and, and, and get it, get the loading flow of objects to be uniform in the, in the way that we're handling things in at config and all of that code that's mostly in base, uh, that that is going to be important um, because right now we have lots of varying code paths and sometimes it just blows up. Um, so we need to figure that out. Um, okay, what else are we looking at for beta? Uh, we need to refactor the HTTP service. Um, so let's see. We need, so yeah, so we need data, plenty of data flow tutorials. Um, oh yeah, a factor HTTP service. Um, oh. so, so one thing that I wanted to add about yeah. documentation, that is like there are some abstract concepts that probably you only understand the best. And uh, like, for example, operation implementation network. So, so for example, uh, uh, there could be like some some things which which actually tell what happens if you switch this for example if uh, what is the need to uh, switch our operation implementation network and uh, what, what could be another operation implementation network from uh, dif how, how another dif different op operation implementation network could be there which is not the default one like something like that you know you get to get my point. Yeah, I get your point. Yeah, and that's exactly what I'm uh, trying to work on with the. Uh, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong here, maybe. But I. Uh, this is when I'm talking about the data flows and the tutorials around that. I want to go. Uh, I need to go implement one of these so that we can show the example. Um, because I think yeah, that's important. So if there's other concepts, so what other concepts come to mind? Um, there, so orchestrator. Um, operation implementation network. Uh, is there anything else conceptually that comes to mind? Mm, these two are the ones, but I cannot really recollect what any, any other thing right now. Okay. Okay. Um, but, but. Okay. Great. Um, so let's let's and let's also track. So if there's anything that needs to be documented, uh, uh, please open a missing documentation issue. Because I know that, yeah, some of these things are things that I understand and, and, and I haven't written down. Um, 
so need to I need to go write those down. Um, and some of them I know, and some of them I don't know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, please let me know if we we have something that we don't know. Uh, I know that I know that the data flow stuff is lacking um, mainly because there've been several gaps in there that that are always like. Oh, we need to fill this gap before we document it. But now I'm like, okay, we need to go fill those. So, okay. And then we, we talked about TensorFlow and, and API stability. So the main thing, I think the other main thing that we really need to figure out here and, and on the vein of saving and loading is um, uh, file formats. Um, so uh, file slash document formats. Um, so... Uh, versioning, uh, metadata, um, and contents. Uh, so, so thinking about uh, things, uh, thinking about our config dict uh, structure, um, which has uh, plugin and config right now uh, this uh, when export when exporting an object uh, we need more information uh, to be uh, backwards uh, to set us up to set ourselves up for good backwards slash forwards compatibility. Um, so things like versioning, so metadata, uh, versioning, uh, let's see, uh, and then, so metadata. Um, platforms. Yeah, platforms. Yeah, so anything, dependencies. Um, so we need to figure out what this stuff is. And the thing is, we don't know what it is right now, right? And so mainly, it's not really about, okay, so so just to, to double, just to reset on this. Essentially, you know, we've got, we have this way of specifying, and we're just getting into it with the object saving and loading, right? Like what, what do we need? What information defines an object, right? Um, and we know we know it takes the plugin type, right? Like model or source, and we know it takes which plugin, and then what the config is for that. We know that, right? But we also need to think about like things moving forward, which is like, okay, what version is it, right? Um, because as we we increment our version numbers, and we have um, you know different different implementations underneath, um, you know, the, the config, this config object that's serialized may no longer apply, right? So we need information to figure out, you know, does it, does it apply um, when I'm trying to load it? You know, does the serialized representation uh, apply to the um, in-memory representation? Um, is there other information that we need? Um, and is there ways that we can, we can support um, are there ways that we can support addition of arbitrary data as well? You know, for example, with like a metadata section, um, you know, and are there required fields to the metadata? Um, is there maybe, um, you know, uh, so optional extensions, optional fields need to support optional fields. Um, and then how, to, like, what does, what does interaction with optional fields look like. Um, for example, you know, uh, say, let's see. So, uh, say for example, we had an extension. So, um, extension to saving and loading. So, when, so, when saving or when loading, uh, verify contents uh, or verify rest of document against um, HMAC. Um, 
So, um, you're, I'll just say crypto deck. Cryptographically verify rest of document. Um, all right. So this is essentially like okay. So so say say for instance, you know, say we have an operation, right? And we need to, um, and we're going to use this operation in a data flow, right? Um, how do we, you know? There's a lot of, there's just a, let's see, like, say you have, yeah, say you have a data flow and you're rolling forward from one operation um, to the next operation, right? Um, you need to, you need to make sure that the, the, I'm not really sure, I'm not doing a good job of explaining this right now, I'm sorry. Um, but basically, we just need to sort of, to, to play with the serialized format. Um, which is why that saving and loading is important and make sure that we have a format that is one extensible and two sets us up for good backwards forward compatibility right and and versioning i think is the main thing there and then an extensible metadata section um, i think if we can nail down how we're going to implement those two things uh, then essentially as we roll forward right oh okay versioning so document versioning document format versioning and um you know object versioning um so basically if we can create a format that that tells us what version of the format we're on then we can effectively do backwards for come forward compatibility really easily right because we can just read the version number of the document and now we can parse appropriately and we're going to set ourselves up for success going forwards um because we aren't you know constantly trying and failing to parse something and then determining the version you know based on failure right to parse a given format right so things like that right that that does that make sense does anybody have any questions on that? And then we can probably log off here because I know we're over. It, it is like a lot to take. Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's a lot going on here. Good. Yeah, but but really the, the point being, I think, you know, if we work on this serialization stuff, um, we work on the config infrastructure, and then we work on making the config stuff backwards, forwards compatible, um, you know, then as we go forward, we can save and load these objects um and we can save and load them in a way that um you know we can do sustainably uh if we create the right formats um that's at a high level you know what i'm what i'm saying here right i think these are the these are the core concepts that will allow us to be successful going forward so these are really the things that we need to think about um as we're as we're on our road road to beta here but before we hit that um, we're going to do the 4.1 release which will have all the changes that you guys uh, put in uh, over the summer here so and, 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 and we'll try to do that the, soon uh, what? and where does the second party stuff fit in and where does the second party stuff fit in so the second party definitely has to has to happen before beta uh, um ideally sooner Uh, but must before beta. Um, and the main thing is, this is our guide uh, for how to uh, do third party. Uh, so, so, so the the main, the biggest, the biggest thing around second party plugins and why it's so important is because right now our entire thing is set up around the mono repo, right? But our plugin, the, the point of the project is that we really, we, we want to be in a more distributed set, setting and we want people to be able to write their own plugins, right? And contribute them to an ecosystem, right? So we need to, we need to make sure that our development setup also follows that model, right? And so if we split this stuff out and do the second party, um, and second party is really an umbrella term to cover the taking the, you know, the subdirectories out and putting them in their own repos, right? And if we can figure out that whole CI workflow um, and that Git workflow and the way that contribution works and documentation works uh, with that, then we should be we should be easily able to implement 
um, what we should be able, easily able to handle when somebody said, hey, hey, I've written this, you know, plugin for a model. How do we display that on the doc site? And all of that workflow we figured out while we went through figuring out the second party stuff, right? Um, and that's what, you know, we want to make sure that we have that, that base understanding so that when people come and they, they can see how they can easily create plugins and then share plugins, right? Because that's the, that's one of the main goals, right? So does that, does that, does that, is that a good answer there? Or? Yes, it does. Okay, cool. All right. Um, all right, cool. Yeah, and that's, so these are our main things, right? Documentation is always refactor the HTTP service object saving learning. I think, yeah, I think this pretty much covers beta um, desires. Um, so obviously we've got to, we're, we'll use, you know, the 4.x um, to get there, right? And then shout out on the getter or on issues um, to say, to say, uh, if you think something should be tagged a specific milestone, right? And then I'll just go tag it. Um, so, yeah, cool. And then, of course, always CI, CI related things to catch stuff that, that we catch during code review um, for contribution um, because, you know, streamlining that workflow is key as well. Um, and hopefully when we move to second party, then we can take, if you guys, you know, as long as you guys still want to be involved, then we can start making the other part of second party is we can, we can take people and we can make them maintainers of given repos, right? So, so we can have a set of maintainers for each plugin, uh, and then we can have a set of maintainers that span all of the, the, the plugins, right? Um, and that way we can get better throughput on reviews. Yes, yes, that is good, like, because you, currently you have all the responsibility of doing the reviews and like merging stuff. So yeah, it, right. So burdens, overburdens you sort of like. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, exactly. It would be, and it would be great, you know, if we can grow more. If I, if I'm the only one that has permissions to do reviews, then you know, I'm really the only like, I'm the only one practicing the skills of reviewing, right? And we need to get to a place where other people can practice those reviewing skills as well, um, so that they can, you know, become reviewers. Um, so hopefully we can get on that soon. I was talking to Sakshan about that, um, and we were brainstorming. But um, all, all anybody so, who. So yeah uh, how i was thinking about this but like uh, what we can do is start start reviewing uh, contributions from new contributors yeah that would be and great like, and like you can come at the end and like see all the stuff at once and see like how how, how we should change up ways that's a and great idea eventually we would learn how to like properly yeah. review code that, yeah. that should go we could do uh, actually so we can start doing in 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 this if we get if we i've noticed we've gotten a few contributions already um you know that it seems to have, there was a sudden burst uh, i assume related to the end of gsoc yes, um yes. so we could do that next week so if you guys are going to record your demos we can go through and we can do code review next week um so for next week uh yes, we can, it sounds good yeah sweet all right so let's do that next week and then we can practice that and uh that would be great great suggestion <laughs> So, so actually, it, it boils down to one thing, one more thing that is like uh, knowing the long term goals of the project. Uh -huh. You can you can foresee stuff that we cannot sometimes. So it would, yeah. it would come with time, like understanding yeah. how things should, should be structured. Properly. Yep, yep, yeah, and and uh, yeah, we can we can talk more about long term goals. All right. So, so if you right. have any issues like accessing the video file, demo video file, yes, let me know. I will. Try. I will. All right, great. Thanks, guys, and great job with the demo today. All right, we'll play you the. If you guys have your demos for for next time, we'll play them in the meeting. Otherwise, um, you know, we'll just whenever you're ready. So, cool. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.